So the other day I went out to the mailbox and found a nice little surprise. Logox had sent out a little thank you, something very unexpected. They weren't looking for anything in return. And we've done some videos on the on the past. Absolutely love their tools. It's really hard not to get behind them. Just top notch quality stuff that they do. Well, they sent out one of their Genox knives. And if you're not familiar with this knife, this is a knife actually where they had done a collaboration with LT Wright knives. And LT Wright knives are really well-known co knife company based out of Ohio, handcrafted, American-made, lifetime warranty knives, really well-known in the bushcraft community. And uh, when I opened this thing up, I was very excited. This knife has a scanty grind on it, nice leather sheath here, eight ounce sheath, double sewn, and uh, even has a nice fire steel with a built-in holder, uh, belt loop here, and then a little dangler here. So if you're walking through the woods and don't want things to get hung up, you can always hang that off your belt like that. I grew up reading a lot of outdoor books, such as Where the Red Fern Grows, The Real Heroes of Talmark, or The Hatchet. Books that really captivated me and just something about the adventure of spending time in the outdoors. Then the mid 2000s rolled around, a lot of really fun survival shows came out. You got your Man vs. Wild, you got stuff by like Les Trout, uh, Survivor Man, love a lot of his stuff, especially some of his early stuff like Snowshoes and Solitude. You got Dick Panicky, that was always really a fantastic story. I remember the first time I saw that on PBS, it just my jaw dropped. And then uh, you got Ray Mears, definitely one of my all time favorites. So it isn't all dramatized, it was almost like the Anthony Bourdain of bushcraft. He'd go out and spend time with people, hear their perspectives on life, and learn different skill sets, and go out and put some of these things to the test. Really one of my top favorites. And of course, uh, the Real Heroes of Telemark is actually written by him, or he had written a version of this book, which I thought was phenomenal. Uh, if you haven't checked out that book, I would definitely recommend doing so. I've always taken just some basic knowledge of survival type stuff and made sure I, I, I brush up on it every so often. I can do a bow and drill fire. I can start fires with flint and steel. There's a lot of different methods. However, the less you use them, the more rusty you get, the more effort, energy, calories are burned to do some of these things. And generally about once a year, I'll go out and start a couple of different fires and some different methods just to kind of brush up my skill. Believe it or not, it's actually March right now. And we still have a lot of snow on the ground. Winter just seems to have shown up late and it's been going strong here ever since. I thought we'd get outside, spend a little time soaking up some sun and present some different challenges and go out and try to start a fire in this night of deep snow. You ready, bud? Snowshoes might look like they're not holding me up very much, but there's a lot of snow here. Oh. Fell down, boy. Oh, the workout. We're currently in a little patch of poplar here. Definitely not as good a fire starter or something like birch, but the bark on this is really good. Kind of really stringy so you can make a real nice tinder bundle. So we'll see if we can find a down tree and uh, steal a little bark from that. <laughs>
One little trick that I learned when I was a kid, instead of breaking the stuff over your leg and stuff like that and then potentially injuring yourself or hurting yourself is finding two points like this and be able to break it like that. That way you're able to break it nice and safely. So this is the very first time I've ever used this ferro rod and you'll notice that there's a bunch of black coating on there. Uh, so the very first few strikes, we won't get much of a spark, but once we wear that off, it'll start sparking pretty well. I'm going to use the spine of the knife here. That way we don't sacrifice the nice sharp edge that we have on here. Well, that was really easy. Oh, and that feels so good. I'm cold. My hands. Fire is feeling really good. Just a little mild fire here. It's amazing. You would think a lot of this stuff would, you know, melt the snow, but snow is a pretty good insulator, and uh, you can have a pretty good fire and eventually burn down and hit the ground. But a lot of times that snow is sucking up that moisture. Fire is such a critical thing when it comes time for survival. With just one basic skill you can learn, this would be it: learning how to start a fire very efficiently. And I think a lot of it comes down to finding the right material. And uh, it can do so much for you. You can purify your water, cook food, and it is amazing what a difference it makes on your mindset when you're in a survival type situation. It's very easy to get down on yourself and having something like this can really lift your spirits and make a big difference. Today you'll notice I'm wearing wool gloves here. I, I don't like like the Columbia or the kind of those full synthetic type uh, jackets and stuff like that because if it gets too close to the flame it can actually melt and end up burning or sticking to your skin so it's not a very good good type situation so that's generally why you don't catch me wearing stuff like that but this is really nice it's really, it really has warmed me up many years ago I was out hiking in the woods I was a couple miles out off off of a main trail and I was getting ready to turn around and in that process, I, I lost my bearings. And it was a real overcast day, so there wasn't very much sun out, and I didn't have that to utilize. And the sun was on its way down, and that first half hour of kind of not knowing where I was, I started to panic a little bit and uh, turned myself even more around. I spent many hours out there and came out well past this, after the sunset. I was lucky enough to find my way out but I think if I would have been out there very much longer I was honestly thinking about setting up camp and, and uh, trying to find some way to do something like that. A lot of times when I go out hunting or I go out camping I'll carry um, a little kind of lanyard that I made with some paracord and then a, a little flint and steel something like this. Really lightweight easy to carry and uh, really a great fire starter. So you just never know when you're going to need one of those. And I did actually have this on me at the time, or at least had some rope with me. And at that time, I was I was practicing bow and drill quite a bit. But I bet if I sat down and did bow and drill right now, it would take me quite a bit longer than uh, what it used to. I used to do many of those, even in a in a single day.
Getting steamy. So I wouldn't really say I beat on this thing. I didn't do very much batoning, but even when I was doing feather sticking, I was running into a lot of branches and stuff that had knots, which are pretty notorious for dulling up the blade. And just out of curiosity, I wanted to see how well this thing held its edge. It, uh, it's pretty impressive. I have to say I'm really impressed with it so far. I'll have to do a bunch more testing here throughout the summer. I'll even go out and do a bow and drill fire with it. And, uh, uh, I'm pretty sure this will be hanging off my hip come hunting season this year. I'll change out my usual carry and uh, bring this along. This looks like something that will definitely be passed down from generation to generation. Peace. Okay.